All right, welcome to another example for forces in chapter four. This is our first example where we have two different masses. We have mass one, which is on a table, and mass two, which is hanging by a rope. We're gonna make sure we understand what the process is for dealing with two separate masses in a problem so that we can handle it anytime it shows up in our homework or tests. All right, so we have a table with a pulley, and our big mass here, mass one, is five kilograms. It's the one that's on the table, and it's attached by a rope to mass two, which is two kilograms, and is able to swing freely. It's hanging by that rope. There's no friction in this problem, either in the um, pulley, that's what we mean with ideal, or on the table, because we're told it's a frictionless table, you will see friction in um, problems with the table surface itself. And in that case, it would just be opposite the, the direction of motion. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the acceleration of the block and the tension in the rope. There are two unknowns here. Anytime that we have multiple objects, we want to draw a free body diagram or force diagram for each one separately. So the free body diagram of the five kilogram block, we have gravity acting on it straight down. So force of gravity, we can write as mass times the acceleration of gravity. In this particular case, it's five times 9.8 or 49 Newtons. We also have, because it is a surface that we are standing on, a normal force. The normal force here is perpendicular to that surface and is straight up. We don't have friction, although it would point that direction away from the motion, because when we let go, if there's no friction, the whole system is going to accelerate and move this direction. The block will slide to the right on the table, and the hanging block will fall downwards. The tension in the rope we will call FT, or you can call it capital T, either one. It points where the rope is attached because ropes always pull. So for the free body diagram of the 5 kilogram mass, we see these three forces, and the acceleration for that particular mass is to the right, and that is gonna be our positive direction. All right, so we will also draw the free body diagram of the hanging mass, so that's the two kilogram mass. And we see that gravity, first of all, is always straight down. So gravity, just as before, is mass times the acceleration of gravity. But in this case, it's two times 9.8, and that's 19.6. There is no normal force because this thing is not in contact with a surface of any kind. We don't want to just default to throwing all of the forces into each picture that we draw. We're trying to think about the real situation. What we do have, though, is a rope that is attached to the top of this block and is pulling it backwards. If we were to cut the rope, it would fall faster, and so that tension is slowing it down. Because this block is going to be falling the acceleration it experiences is downwards, and that is going to be our positive direction. We need to remind ourselves that here in chapter four, we have a different process, a different perspective, and the direction of acceleration is always positive for our force problems because we're trying to find the amount of acceleration. All right, so in this case, we have two separate objects. The five kilogram block, which I'm going to use purple um, to write down the equations for, and the two kilogram block, which I'm going to use green to represent the equations for. All right. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to decide whether we should use the x or the y forces to get the acceleration for this five kilogram block. Because we see the acceleration pointing to the right here, it's a horizontal acceleration, we care about the net forces in the x direction for this particular mass. The only force pointing in the x direction in this example is the tension force. 
the mass in question here is the five kilogram mass, and then acceleration is the thing that we're trying to figure out. So this equation, if we look at it, has two unknowns, so it is not solvable on its own. However, we have a second object here. This acceleration is pointing downwards. We're going to be looking at the y forces. So the net forces in the y direction are equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. As we have started to see and we will continue to see, when we decide how to write the net forces, it is always going to be the forces in the direction of acceleration, so in this case it's gravity, minus the forces opposite the direction of acceleration. In this case, it's tension. We will not get the correct answer if we write those in the opposite direction. Gravity is the 19.6 minus our unknown tension equals 2A, 2 because it's the 2 kilogram mass that we're looking at. Now, if we look at this equation here, we have two unknowns, and they are the same two unknowns as the previous equation. So, what we can do is we can solve a system of equations. We are going to see this all of the time in chapter 4, so we need to feel comfortable with this algebra trick. So the way that this is going to work, in chapter 4, when we are dealing with two objects tied together, it is always going to be true for us that the tension in the two ends of the rope kind of point opposite of each other when we compare that to the direction of motion. So what we will always do for these problems is we will actually write them one on top of the other and then add the two equations together. Certainly in this particular case with uh, no friction involved, we can use substitution, but training ourselves to do this process is going to make sure that we can handle even more complex problems without having to worry about extra steps of solving for one of our unknowns. When we add equations together, we add everything on the left. So we have tension plus 19.6 minus tension. And then separately, we add everything on the right, 5A plus 2A. Now look what happened to the tension. In one of the cases, it's positive. In one of the cases, it's negative. And so those two cancel each other. We have 19.6. And then 5a plus 2a is just 7a. So we divide both sides by 7. And we get that the acceleration is equal to 2.8 meters per second squared. That is the amount of acceleration we have already drawn, both in our picture and in our free body diagrams, the directions for all of this. The problem isn't quite finished. That's one of our final products. But the other is the tension. To get the tension, we just have to plug this acceleration back into either of our unknown, um, either of our equations. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit easier because tension's already solved for, but we can use either one to get our answer. And we will get 14 newtons for the tension in the rope. The amount of tension is 14 newtons, both pulling to the right on the 5 kilogram block and pulling up on the 2 kilogram block. So a couple of things to make sure we understand as the most common sticking points. When we are writing the net force in the y direction, it's the forces in the direction of motion minus the forces opposite the direction of motion. When we have two objects tied together, the tension on either side of the same rope will be identical. And extremely important, when we have two objects tied together like this, the acceleration is going to be the same for both of those objects. It's the same number value acceleration, even if it's pointing in two different directions. We will see a couple of other examples with two objects tied together, and we will see this same process happening with those two separate free body diagrams, two separate equations. Then we add those equations and solve for our unknowns. I will see you in some additional example videos.